Happy Sunday, everyone. I'm Shauna Yao, CEO and business and personal success strategist at TotalGenius.net, where I help people discover your genius, your life purpose made of your expertise and life experience, and build a profit-generating business that you love. And so today, I wanted to talk about a subject that I often hear people talk about, and it's hurting uh it's hurting people, and it may be hurting you. And I think that there's a misunderstanding with this word visibility. And so if that's you, or if you've ever said or struggled with, the, with being visible online, then you're gonna like um, today's video. So visibility, you know, of course, it's important to put yourself out there because if nobody knows that you exist as a business owner, that's a problem. Being visible online, it is important. And, um, you know, making sure that you show up where your ideal clients are is something that every business owner needs to know. But how you think of visibility will affect uh, whether or not your ideal clients find you. And it also will affect your productivity, your mindset, um, and your ability to, um, to convert client, uh, your audience into clients. So, you know, I often hear people say, I need to be more visible. The reason I'm not making money and I'm not getting clients is I just need to be more visible. So many people, and I don't know if somebody is actually teaching this or if just people are observing, but, um, you know, the, the general thinking with online entrepreneurs is I need to join groups and uh, show my value by, you know, reading posts and seeing where I can add value. And when the right opportunity comes up, you know, somebody will see my genius and will connect and, you know, magic will happen and, and you'll get clients. So now I'm going to say, you know, that does happen. Uh, in fact, there are groups that where a lot of people do that and they, they actually get clients and make money. Uh, but those cases are very um, select and they apply to specific type of people uh, with specific types of businesses. And uh, they, what they end up doing is spending all day online. Now, what ends up happening to most people when they do that is that you go and you join a lot of groups and uh, you spend a lot of time on, let's say, let's just choose a social media channel. So let's just say it's Facebook. And what ends up happening is, you know, Facebook is a habit-forming product. It's actually a product. And, you know, while uh, it may look like this big, um, you know, cheerleading conference of business owners um, and, and, it, and it can be kind of fun to, um, to connect with people, it also can uh, cause just you as an entrepreneur who has a business um, to fall into what is called the comparison game, that you end up seeing a lot of people that are doing amazing things. There's a lot of people doing amazing things. Um, and your brain recognizes that as, wow, they're doing such amazing things. Wow, they just made, you know, $100,000 the last second. You know, why aren't I doing that? And uh, what ends up happening is the more that you hang out on, let's say, Facebook or some other social media channel and you start seeing all these other people's victories, the more your self-confidence drops. And instead of uh, then doing the things that you need to do in order to attract your ideal clients, um, it falls into this uh, whole mind game of, oh no, why am I not doing this? Uh, why am I not as good as them? Uh-oh, there's something I need to learn. And it's just our human brains to, number one, want to grow, number two, you know, our brains um, are designed to want to fit in. So, you know, I'm kind of a rebellious person and, um, you know, many of, of my clients and my audience were, you know, a little bit on the rebellious side. But as humans, 
Um, all humans are designed to want to be liked. You know, back in the caveman days, our, um, if we weren't liked by the tribe, um, we got kicked out and then we didn't have anyone to protect us. We didn't have a cave to sleep in and saber-toothed tigers and things like that would eat us. So it's just worked into our DNA to want to be liked. And when you go into things like Facebook and you want to um, be visible without a strategy, um, it's just a natural reaction to want to be liked. And so multiple things happen. So you fall into the comparison game. Then you feel like uh, you want to fit in more because of the lack of the self-esteem. And then, you know, some other people may be sharing um, the same things. And what ends up happening is this, like, this spiral of confused people who um, aren't getting clients. And so the next day you wake up and you think, oh, no, I need to be more visible because I'm not getting clients. So it's, this is the endless loop that I see a lot of people falling in. And if you have experienced this, don't feel bad because, you know, everybody has. I, I, I haven't talked to one entrepreneur. I don't care if they are making tons of money now or they're not making any money. They just started or they've been in business for years. But every single person who, who goes onto Facebook, <laughs> it falls into this whole loop. And it's until they're able to realize and wake up what the real thing that they need to do is to, to um, attract their ideal clients and, and get clients is that they start to realize how to use social media as a, as a tool. But that being said, I have also talked to people who have uh, turned it around and then, you know, it's a habit-forming product, so you fall back into it. So you have to always be very mindful and, you know, the next thing I want to talk about is a strategy. So, like I said in the beginning, being visible is very important. Like, y you do need to, um, to get at, put yourself out there. But if you don't have a strategy to back it up and a goal, you will end up in that hole and the sloop that I was just talking about. So, how you actually should approach it is, number one, have a strategy and have a goal. Like, you have a goal. Let's say you want to get two clients this week. Let's just, say, let's, just, let's just say one client. Let's just make it simple. You want to get one client this week. That's your goal when you go on social media. Then, and this is just my suggestion, so you can, like, take this and, and um, you know, do whatever you want with it. Before you get on social media, you need to understand, number one, who is your ideal client? I call them your BBF legacy client. So it's your best business friends. And not everyone's your client, but you want to be surrounded by people that get you. So you want to know that, you know, who is, the, who is your BBF legacy client? Who are the people that are going to champion you and root for you? Not the people who just like you. So remember, you know, we're human, so we're designed to want to be liked. As a business owner... Before you get on social media, you need to take time and say, you know, who are my BBF ideal clients? Who uh, can I help? Who will champion me on, not just as a friend, but they champion me on because I'm helping them. They want to listen to what I'm saying because what I, the words that I naturally speak, not the words that I, I use to be liked, the words that I say behind the scenes, like, I wish that, or, you know, I can't believe that this, whatever it is about the subject that you do. So if you're a life coach and, you know, you have a strong opinion that, you know, um, it's, uh, it's what you eat for breakfast. I'm just making this up. It's what you eat for breakfast that really matters in your life. And so, you know, you have this really strong opinion, but then you go on social media and, um, you know, you think that people are going to think you're weird, so you don't say that. And then you end up like dancing around it. Having a strategy that works and knowing who your BBF ideal clients are means that you have the courage, the moral authority, because you know from your own experience that 
what you believe, you know, if it's what you eat for breakfast or whatever you do, that you believe that it works. And you may feel embarrassed at first to speak about it because it's something that, you know, you developed yourself. And you're like, oh my God, you know, they're going to think I'm so stupid. I, I, this is what, it, you know, I say to my husband or this is what I, you know, what I used. Who's going to believe this? I need to like uh, dumb down what I'm thinking so that uh, people will like me. It's not the number of likes on any post or any social media or anything that will uh, lead someone to want to go to their wallet and pull up their credit card to pay you. It's the fact that what you're saying uh, attracts them and it makes sense to them. So, you know, we think as humans that it's just us that uh, are thinking the thoughts that we're thinking. Like everybody, you know, I used to think this too until I started studying the science of the mind. But, you know, everybody, we all think that we're, we're weird. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I mean, you know, you do like quirky things and, uh, and they're just, you know, so you. And you don't really think anything of it until you have to actually like put it out there. And then it's like, people are going to judge me. Well, as I said in my other video, people are going to judge you anyway. You have a, first of all, you have a business. So the goal is to attract people. And if you are going to actually attract people, you're going to have to accept that you're going to repel people too. So, you know, not everybody is going to like you. and Not everybody is going to get what you say. That, that's just truth. I mean... You can't edit your message enough so that everybody will get you. And in fact, if you dumb down your message or try to edit it or make it general, you know, I'm sure that you've heard this. If you try to speak to everybody, you speak to nobody. There's so much information out there. There's so many people who are really good at what they do. You know, I'm a business strategist. Do you know how many business strategists there are out there? You know, whatever you do, you're a life coach, you, you, you sell clothes, whatever it is. There are so many businesses out there. As Jim Rohn says, there are no original business ideas, only original people. So dumbing down your message or thinking that you want to speak to everybody is not how you're going to attract your ideal clients to you and attract people that get you. So... Having a strategy that works in being visible means that you, you, before you go on social media, you have this solid conviction and belief in yourself that of what, what it is that you do and what it is that you do in your business and what it is that you can help your people with. And that belief and that conviction is so solid that even if you doubt yourself, you're like, but no, that's, I mean, I really believe this. Okay, so it is a little um, hard to, uh, to get over that hump of, I need to be liked, I'm a little scared to speak and have people judge me. That's hard. I, I'm just, it's just the truth. It's hard. This is why you want to keep doing it so that you can attract people that get you. So, you know, I'm kind of weird. I'm kind of quirky. And um, I, I, I don't fit in with anybody. I never have. <laughs> and every time that I try to, so, you know, I, I, since I was a child, I tried to fit in with the popular crowd. And every time I tried to do that, I... I wasn't able to be me. And what ended up happening was, uh, you know, spending 46 years of my life, 46, <laughs> thinking that something was wrong with me. And, you know, I, I did get success, produce success, because thank God, you know, I'm a little rebellious. But starting my business, I tried to do the same thing. You know, the first entrepreneur I came across was Marie Forleo. I was like, oh, I need to be Marie Forleo. Forleo. Well, I'm not Marie Forleo, clearly, <laughs> and uh, 
what ended up happening was that nobody could hear me. Nobody could hear me. Like, I'm like, why am I so smart? I have 25 years of experience and it doesn't seem like anyone that it matters to anybody. Like, I, I see, I can help you, I can help you. And I was so frustrated. And it wasn't until I actually took a stand and decided to, I actually have a, have a picture on my wall and it's, it's this, of this model going like this. Because literally I would say to myself every night, shut out the noise. And I would go just do my work and I, I, I was risking it all. I felt like I was risking it all. I felt like I, was, I just jumped off a cliff. What ended up happening was I, I never got a lot of likes, okay, for, first of all. So if you look, see me on social media, I don't get a lot of likes on my posts. But I got stalkers. My clients would contact me. Oh, my God, I've been stalking you forever. I read all your posts. And inside, I'm like thinking, freaking like me. Like, <laughs> that's what I think in my head. But th that's not who they are, you know. Um, and so that's fine. And then the clients started to come. And so why I want to tell you that is that your people are out there and being visible matters. But if you can't speak your genius, your strong opinions, the things that are, are going to, um, to help people understand their problems. So, you know, remember, and at least I, I, I would hope that you're, you're on this call because you or this video because you want to help people. So rather than thinking, I need to be visible, you know, pay me money, somebody, you know, see me. Rather than that, when you, want, when you know who you help and who gets you, I want you to, before you get on social media, is to think, I know this person is suffering, and I know it because I suffer, and I know all the issues that go on, not just in what you sell, but, you know, so I help people stand in their value. But I know, you know, after spending 46 years of not standing in my value, how, number one, easy it is to keep, you know, you have to keep reminding yourself and finding ways to overcome that need to be liked. Number two, you know, you struggle with other things, you know, self-confidence, self-esteem, you know, how do you say things to get people to understand what you say? Like, there's so many different, you know, what do you eat so that you can think clearly, there's so many different things that, uh, that your BBFs are struggling with that your, your genius helps. So, you know, I, I did this thing, this exercise in my group yesterday and asked people um, about, you know, what other things are you interested in? And I, I narrowed it down to three because those three things, so you really want to get, so when you want to be visible, you want to be visible to your ideal clients, and your ideal clients uh, should be, you know, people that are going to get you are going to get what you're interested in. So I know this is a kind of a weird concept. People are like, you know, design your ideal client. You know, do they go to yoga? Well, you know, my client, my ideal clients, you know, they may go to yoga, but I, I don't often talk about yoga because, in fact, I never talk about yoga because I don't do yoga. <laughs> so, you know, I mean. Um, I, I, I don't, and so it's okay if they do it, but I talk more about holistic health, and, you know, I, I talk about dogs, I talk about moral authority, I talk about the science of the mind, because those are things I know about at a deep level, those are things I can help people with, and if, if people don't value that, they're not going to get me, and so I have had people contact me and ask me if I can help them with their business. And when they aren't my ideal clients, I, I, I have to turn them away because they won't value what I'm teaching. And therefore, what ends up happening is that they end up not doing what I teach, which is not only frustrating for me, but then they walk away and they feel as though what I did didn't work. And so, you know, if you ever heard of bad clients, if, if you are just attracting people who want what you sell but aren't your BBFs, 
you potentially could have a bad client that may pay you money, but end up uh, not valuing what you do and then telling somebody else. And so your goal is to be niche specific so that, number one, you know, I can't think of, I, I know a lot of people and they're like, oh my God, my marketing is so hard. What do I, what do I, what do I write about? What do I, you know, create a post about? And that's not how it should be. Marketing is understanding people at a uh, deep level and then speaking that out loud so that they hear you. It's not, you know, trying to think of the perfect post. Uh, you know, there, you have to have strategy around it. But if you understand your BBS, so, you know, you, that's your best buddies, then you understand the things you're suffering with. Then what you post and how you market yourself should come kind of natural to you because the real BBF that you're speaking to is yourself. Hello. So, you know, this is also a hard concept. So I, I know I'm talking about hard concepts, but once you get it, it's not, it's not so hard. So, you know, you yourself have been through challenges and the lesson that we teach is the, is the lesson we need to learn over and over and over again. So I did a, actually a YouTube video. If you want to go see it, it's at, um, I think, day two. On um, If you look up my name, I, I haven't registered the URL yet, but if you look up my name, uh, Shauna Yao, on YouTube, I have it, this uh, whole genius diaries that I'm starting. And they're very me, so don't expect, you know, a suit and, like, all polished up. I'm just, that's not me. So anyway, you know, I talk about um, how when you start your business, you think that, um, or many people, I'm not saying you, think that you have to be perfect. You know, there's a lot of people online that they look perfect. And uh, if that's not you, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to share your genius, number one. Number two, you have no idea what's going on behind those eyes. They could be totally messed up. They could have other areas of their life that are falling apart. The lesson that we teach is the lesson we need to learn over and over again. We are human. So we may have a business and we may have it figured out, but we're human. So our human brains are 95% unconscious and fit more than 50% um, habitual. So the things that you've learned in childhood, who you are, you know, all those things, you may have overcome it, but it's just going to keep raising its ugly head. That's just called life. And so, uh, you know, understanding your value and being able to speak it, even if you um, maybe don't feel like you have it all figured out yet, helps you, helps you because you have then have an emotional connection with your ideal client. They're not looking for you to be perfect. They're looking for somebody that they relate to that gets them. Because again, like I said in the beginning, we all think we're kind of weird, right? And so, you know, hearing somebody that, uh, that also gets you, that is telling you it's okay and, and you actually speak the same language is, is life-changing. You know, I always say when I was, um, when I started out, you know, I was in my Marie Forleo phase, <laughs> I wasn't looking for a coach. I, I wasn't looking for a coach. I was looking for a key maker. I literally would uh, go to bed at night thinking, I need a key, I need a key to unlock my door. Do you know what that door was? It was called my self-confidence. You have a, if, if you are suffering from this, it's called your self-confidence. You have so much genius inside of you, so, so much knowledge that if somebody had the magic key, it's, it's just like it overflows outside of you. And so that's what you are to your ideal clients. So instead of, you know, thinking I need to be visible, I want you to think I have the key. I have the key being, you know, my weird quirky self or whatever. And I'm going to help my BBFs unlock their genius, whatever it is that you do. 
because they're going to get me. And I'm, I'm, and they're going to say, finally, somebody understands what I'm saying. You know, they don't need, uh, every time I see someone who's like all polished and perfect, I think that's great for them, but I can't hear them because it's boring to me. I, I literally like, you know, I try, <laughs> I've tried, I've tried to follow the perfect people. Uh, so I can, you know, figure out how to do perfect videos and things. I literally, like my brain shuts down. I can't, I can't hear it because they're not speaking to me. And so, you know, uh, you may have that, that your clients, your ideal clients, if you don't feel like you're visible to them, it could be that you're not uh, approaching it like a key maker. You're a key maker that's going to help these people unlock their genius. So I call this, you know, having the moral authority. That means having the conviction in who you are and what you do, even when you don't believe, because at some point you do, and then speaking it with that authority, not because you think you're great, not because, oh, I need to be visible, but because you know that when you do, regardless of anyone likes you or not, somebody hears you, and then they see you. And that's what visibility is. Visibility is... Um, First, being visible to the most important person, which is yourself. When you realize that the, having a strategy of being visible starts with being visible to yourself, being acknowledging the person that you are and how, um, how much greatness lives inside of you and, you know, that sounds like stupid. Now, I, now I'm thinking like Lewis Howes. Like, <laughs> the greatness, you know, whatever. Um, but there is. You know, I, I know for me, you know, I, I deal with a severe medical health condition every day. And today, you know, every afternoon I look like I don't have a problem. Every morning I wake up and I feel like I'm in a nightmare. And... I can only, you know, look at that and I can't say I wish it were gone because the reality is, is it's not. And, but I can be grateful for it because it allowed me to spend so much, so many hours every day learning about the science of the mind and, and, you know, learning about emotional intelligence and human psychology and, and business and marketing. I had to learn and listen to educational audio for the past four years, for six to seven hours a day, and that's, you know, when, you're, when you are sitting in your own personal jail cell of a bathroom surrounded by four walls and a miserable condition, all you want to do is get outside your head. So all I did was focus on learning. So I can only be grateful for that because that has allowed me to have my business today and to be able to speak to you and help you. So you have those challenges yourself. They don't have to be so severe. They don't have to be medical. You've overcome things yourself. And those things are amazing. And that's how you stand with moral authority. You with your big heart and your genius brain. And you can go and help others and not worry about being visible because when you do that over and over and over again, I guarantee you, 100%, you will, your, your people will start to hear you. You may, you, every time you go and you check to see if someone liked your post, you are stealing from your value. Because it's not about being liked, it's about being respected. If you are speaking with moral authority, that means that you're a good person who wants to help people and you know that you have a solution. You don't need to go check and see if people like you. You gain respect by speaking your truth. And then, you know what's funny? Is that when people respect you, they'll want you to like them. That's the other side of it. But just like me, you know, you don't have to have a ton of people like you. 
there's people reading your stuff and you have no idea. And you don't want to just blend in, you know, oh, you know, ha having a, uh, you know, a stroll outside. Look at me. I'm so pretty, you know, smiling face. That's great. You know, I do that too. I, I post a picture of, you know, me and Harlow walking the other night. That's great. You want to share yourself. But have an opinion because I know you have one. And be willing to put it out there. As I said, remember, people are judging you whether you um, think that or not. So you might as well have them judge you and attract the people that, that get you and repel the people that don't. I mean, I can think of it, nothing more frustrating than trying to get people to like me. I'm very opinionated and, you know, that would be like, <laughs> I think that'd be impossible. But I, I know I, I want to help people. So it helps me get over myself. I, I can't read and, and uh, talk at the same time, Robin. So I see your comment, but and, and I will go back and read it later. But um, maybe I chalk this up to being old because my eyes can't focus that way. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I will go back and read it. <laughs> so anyway, let me make sure I got everything. Oh, so I heard this the other day um, and I thought that this was such a good phrase for you to remember is that you, the goal of your social media is to raise curiosity rather than raising resistance. So you want people to like go, wow, you know, what is this person saying? The right people. You want the right people to go, wow, what is this person saying? Because the wrong people won't be able to hear you. When you start, when you start speaking your truth, the wrong people won't be able to hear you. I've had clients, actually many of my clients do this when they first come to me, is that they're just like thinking that they have to be visible so they post like an a image quote online. That's great. You know, I post image quotes on, um, on Instagram. Uh, but if you aren't speaking some sort of truth behind that and in addition to that, those are just, you know, people have this thing called change blindness. This is actually a, um, a psychological term where things are changing at a rapid pace and they're blind to it. Like literally, you know, people could be taking off their clothes and, and you know, then the next second that, you know, they have clothes. People wouldn't even notice that because they have this thing called change blindness. So if you're just posting like, you know, pretty quotes, uh, they may, you know, have a lot of impact or something to you. But to other people, it's just like, you know, there's so much social media and it's just like flying by. And you, uh, you look at your own patterns. You know, um, it's just, it's, uh, it's whatever you need to do to understand your moral authority, your strong conviction in yourself, and be able to speak it out loud is how you, get this word, position yourself as the person who can help your ideal clients. So in actuality, positioning rather than selling is what will make your business or break your position, your business. You know, this, I guess positioning is kind of like, um, in high school, like popularity, except it's not about numbers. It's about having that moral authority. And as a matter of fact, this next week, I'm coming up with a, or I'm starting the sign up for a free training on um, how to position yourself, uh, be positioned to sell so that you attract your ideal clients and are seen as the moral authority. So that training is going to happen in two weeks. And if you sign up, you'll also get access to a seven day free challenge, position to sell and a uh, free um, teleclass on the other side of that. It's very multi-leveled and uh, I'm, I'm going to be there to help you during the free challenge. If those of you that have taken Master Your Money Code, it may look the same a little bit, but uh, it's obviously it's seven days um, and uh, I, I encourage you to read all the posts because as you know in Master Your Money Code, like there was just a lot of content there. Um, it's different. And so I, I want you to really, um, if you're going to, so, so I'm going to just say right now, if you don't know me, if you don't know like 
my work. Um, I'm very big on helping people get results. <laughs> and so if you are just going to join and then, you know, blah, 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 I'm not going to open my emails, you know, then don't join. Because I'm not about having, you know, a ton of followers and, you know, things like that. I actually want to help people. And if, you know, uh, I'm not very woo-woo, but if you're just going to be there and take up space, you're just taking up space. I don't need a big list. I want a list of people that I can actually help who want to read my content. So, you know, as I said, I'm very opinionated. I'm not for everybody. And if you're not going to do the work and at least try to do the work, and if, if it's difficult for you, you know, reach out to me and I can help you, then don't do it because, um, you know, doing anything without committing to it I don't care if it's my training or somebody else's. It's just a waste of time. And time is the most precious asset that you have. This is why, you know, I get very frustrated when I see people wasting time on Facebook. You know, have times that you go on there and then shut it down so you can be productive. So you can enjoy your family. So that you can have a life. You know, I know there's people that are very like business, business, business. And, that's great because, you know, I think that, the, that there's, a, there's a place for that and there's people that really, really want that. But I, you know, my BBFs, they want a business. They want to make money. They want to love what they do. And they have families. And so, you know, at the end of your life, so, you know, I, I, I posted something in my group the other day. I think I posted it on my page too, but it was, a, you know, a note to yourself, you know, I'm going to make you so proud one day. I encourage you to write a note, a letter to yourself, as you, July 2017, or you know, in 10 years, or whatever it is, and say what you're proud of. Say, you know, talk about what you wish you didn't focus on, what you wish um, were, were, you would have known um, now, because I guarantee you, it's not going to be, I wish I spent more time on Facebook. I wish I spent more time trying to be liked. And I wish I spent more time trying to be visible. I just, I don't think that that's going to be in that letter. And, um, you know, the truth is, we don't know how long our lives are. And, you know, I woke up one day and my parents had died. I had this health condition that traumatizes my everyday. I had no idea that, you know, yesterday I was 28 and now I'm 48. What happened? <laughs> so, you know, I'm not, I'm not like trying to be the voice of doom, but I'm saying that if 95% of our thoughts are unconscious, life happens underneath you. And uh, you don't realize, you know, it, people say like time goes faster when you get older. No, in actuality, it doesn't go faster, but you start to realize how much time you wasted in the past. That, that's what happens. And then you start to go, oh my God, you know. And so don't catch yourself in that pattern of unconsciousness. You know, it, it's your human brain. And so I really encourage you to write that note to yourself. Do it for the end of the year, December 31st. What do you wish that you would have done, started doing today? And take the risk. So, you know, there is no growth without a little risk. And, uh, you know, having courage as a business owner is something that um, I think will separate you from the people that fall back that, that don't move, have any movement to people that grow and gain movement, get clients, make money. It's called putting yourself out there and being willing to fail because the greatest failure in life is not doing it. And, you know, the reality is, is we're all going to fail. <laughs> we're all going to fail at some point. But I know... I don't know, I may not know you personally, but I know that you failed in the past and you picked yourself up and you went back at it. And so as a business owner, you're going to fall and then you're going to pick yourself up and go, that was a good lesson. 
Now let me move on to the next thing. And the quicker that you can do that, the greater you're going to find your answers. Rather than trying to, uh, you know, getting caught up in, in whatever what everyone else is doing, do whatever you need to do, you know, spend that time instead, instead saying, you know, focusing on, I believe in myself. So I'm just going to teach you one last thing before I go. Uh, you know, and m many of you have heard this before, but it's active focus meditation. I cannot tell you how much this will help you in, in the long run in your life and help you gain focus around um, your courage and your ability to bulletproof yourself. So active focus meditation, and you know, some people do it in the afternoon, I really highly recommend that you do this first thing in the morning within an hour of waking up that you put your tennis shoes on you know, now I'm actually going to be specific and say, you know, you, instead of just, you know, standing still or dancing, whatever, put your tennis shoes on, go outside and walk or run quickly. I do it with my dog Harlow for at least 10 to 20 minutes a day. Choose a theme song that uh, inspires you. So many of my clients, they chose um, Fight Song by Rachel Platten. Um, whatever song, like, motivates you and makes you, um, makes you, you know, sometimes cry. You know, people choose fight song because, you know, this is my fight song, take back my life song. I'm not a singer. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, you know, that, and then you put it in your headphones and, oh, you do, Kim? That's so awesome. And, and, uh, but you need to do it every single day. So I, I, this is a solid commitment. And so if you join my seven day challenge, this is a solid commitment. If you're not willing to do that, I don't want you to join. You will get other value from it, but this is so important because I can't tell you how much this will help you understand your own personal truth, your own conviction. Before you get on social media, don't check anything. Don't, don't look at your email. Don't see how many people liked you. Don't look at your notifications. Try not to talk to your husband. Like, literally, like, I, I want you just to go outside and go do this. What ends up happening, so, is that your, um, your success goals, and then why don't you focus on your success goals? Not your to-do list, but your success goals. Who am I at my highest value? Who am I, you know, when I, when I, in my dreams? Who am I? You know, what do you see yourself doing? Visualize, you know, if you're scared of video, I'm on video and everyone's like, you know, people are like loving me and, you know, uh, you want to you lose weight. Like, picture yourself, you know, skinny and, you know, refusing food, whatever it is, like, whatever your goal is. And go out there. And so what it does is it, 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 if you have your success goals and you're moving, which is producing endorphins, so you want to be moving kind of quickly so you're like breathing heavy, combined with the audio, this is amazing, but it creates new neurotransmitters in your brain around your success goals. And you end up, like at the end of your walk run, you're like, woohoo! Like, <laughs> and you want to go and take on the world. You know, I find sometimes I'm like, woohoo! And then I go on social media and it's like, <laughs> but at least you have your focus on and, and, and you can regain, if you start doing this on a regular basis, you can regain that um, confidence inside of you very easily. So creating new neural pathways in your brain. It actually, is, it's like a, um, like a steel cable. And at first, it may be like a string. But the more you do it, it like adds on layers and layers. And soon, it just becomes you. Becomes your brain. And that focus becomes not uh, just something you want. It becomes something you need. And, you know, as humans, we work to be congruent with who we think we are. So... If you think that you're, you know, I like self-esteem, I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not that great, no one's going to listen to me. We work to be congruent with who we think we are. 
So all your actions, everything will work to, uh, to match that. If you start your day with active focus meditation and you're like, woohoo, I'm like rock solid awesome, you may stumble and fall, but your brain and your subconscious will be working to get you back into who you think you are. So if you in your brain are thinking, you know, I'm on top of the world, you may stumble and fall and your brain is going to be like, how can I get back on top of the world? If nothing else, it's good exercise. <laughs> anyway, that's it. I have to go walk Harlow. It's 5,000 degrees outside. Um, and, um, you know, it's Sunday night. So go and, or maybe Monday in, in Europe, go and have yourself a fabulous day. I can't wait to read everyone's comments. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, join me in the Genius Collective if you want. Stay tuned because the, um, the training, the sign up for the training starts Tuesday and uh, the seven day challenge, you can start immediately. And uh, not only do you get that free teleclass on the other side, but you'll get the first email that you're gonna get is going to have a download of what's actually going on in your head and how to actually um, use it to help you position you. So anyway, have a great week, everyone, and set a goal for how many clients you're going to get this week. I think uh, Kim, if you're still on, I know she did it, and it was like magic. Like every time she did it, like, I got clients. I got like five clients. Like whatever. Okay, so have a great night, everyone. Talk to you later.